Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another comic book stream. And what we're gonna do today is I just wanna show you what I've been reading, some of the random comics I've been reading over the last three months or so since I showed you guys, uh, there's a couple of videos we put out, I think, where I showed you the stacks of comic books I've been reading. And right now, uh, for the last little while, I've been sort of into reading just uh, randoms. I am reading some stuff where I'm following, but I'm way behind on everything that I'm pulling. So I'm not really reading any of the, um, other than some randoms from the comics that I'm pulling, uh, because I'm just, uh, I have a lot of things going on right now, and I'm sort of enjoying jumping from one thought to another, one concept to another. And when I do that, you know, get into this type of headspace, I just like picking up a comic book, ideally contain story and reading them right i don't want to follow a huge event because i you know sometimes i can't get back into it for a few weeks or a couple of months and i've totally forgotten what happened in the past right so i want to show you sort of the randoms i've been reading just along the same lines as we did with the previous one or two videos right and this is the stack that we're going to go through right now okay and there's a couple of comics here that i have some comments about okay and this stack all of these are dollar comics they're uh, dollar canadian comics that i've bought so they're basically about 75 cents all of these comics are either 75 cents or less okay that's what i bought them for and i have one graphic novel that i want to show you okay and this is something that i showed you guys uh, previously this graphic novel and that's what i want to start off with and then we're going to get into the singles, the floppies uh, that I've had a chance, the pleasure to read through or the, well, pleasure to read through. Even if they're bad, it's fun to read through sometimes bad comics and you realize what good is, right? If you don't have bad, you wouldn't have a comparison to know what good is, okay? <laughs> sort of looking at it with a, as a optimistic uh, perspective, right? Glass half full instead of half empty, right? But this is uh, sort of a graphic novel that I read. Um, I've read a couple other ones, I believe, too, or uh, I'm pretty sure I've told you uh, what I thought about those ones. One of them was the, uh, the graphic novel about the uh, Latka from Taxi, right? It's uh, Andy Kaufman uh, sort of biography, and it was very good. And this was the next one that I picked up. And this graphic novel is the epic the epic of gilgamesh okay and it's translated by kent dixon and that's the father and it's illustrated by kevin dixon so it's a father and son sort of collaboration that took i think over a decade to get it done the translation anyway where when kent went into it and then got his son to start working on the art and whatnot right and just so just to just to let you know what epic of gilgamesh is i've i've read epic of gilgamesh the the translated works in text form before um, and i've listened to the audiobook before right so i've read it in translated text before and i've listened to the audiobook before and it hasn't really uh, because it jumps around there's a lot of names and stuff it didn't really sink in it was just a nice story and for those of you who don't know what epic of gilgamesh is Ep epic of gilgamesh is considered to be the oldest long story text in our present incarnation of civilization it's the it's the, it's the oldest one that we've found okay so the epic of gilgamesh this here was written on stone tablets and it there's a few different tablets i think there's 10 or whatever it is it's all written here the description of it right but it's basically the longest text longest story that we have in our present civilization right and it sort of goes into mythology and everything you know majority of mythology or much of the mythology in our human civilization that we refer to right now may it be through religious texts may it be through uh, texts of mythology may it be through whatever it might be is based on epic of gilgamesh so it's a must read if you're into 
um, to try to understand what human civilization is and what uh, how information is portrayed and stuff like this, right? But having read the text, the translated text, and having read the audiobook, okay, the one thing uh, I can tell you right now is this adaptation, this graphic novel is the best one that I've experienced so far, either through reading the book or listening to the audiobook. Because it had images that I could relate to, uh, the names were associated with pics that I could see, right? Now I'm gonna show you some of the pages inside here. And my apologies, I'm sort of being uh, uh, wishy-washy with this sort of review of this book. I, as a comic book book, as far as in terms of um, how much it moved me, uh, it, it wasn't personal. It was more informative. It was a, a version of the Epic of Gilgamesh, the story that stuck with me, right? It's the third time that I've gone through this, and this is by far the easiest read, the easiest uh, way I've been able to understand it. Now, the book starts off with a little introduction by this person, Russ, Russ Kick. Okay, so it's got basically, you know, a couple of pages by Russ Kick as an introduction. Okay, and these are the stone tablets that the book is uh, based on, the story is based on, the story is told on, right? So there's, you know, a couple of pages with another thing, introduction must read before you read the graphic novel okay and then there is you know a page by the father explaining who he is and how he got into it a must read right the translator's notes a must read before you read the comic and then there is you know for an artist he wrote the most text introduction there's four pages of the artist's introduction to this work. A must read before you read the comic. Okay, really. Read the text before you get into the graphic novel. Because that sort of lays down the foundation of the importance of Epic of Gilgamesh, how much effort the father and son team put into this work. Okay, and this is basically. Uh, uh, the, a graphic novel from I believe it's eight issues or 12 issues that they put out in single format in floppy format right and I've been trying to find the floppies online I've only found one of the issues on eBay and I haven't contacted them directly to find out if I can if they have any more single issues available for me to get those single issues because I think it's worth having those in a collection I would really want you know the full set in my collection I will at some point contact them to see if they have a set available okay but this was a good read uh, in the notes of the artist he does explain that his art style is rough it sort of grew it got better he started off uh, doing some of the artwork in the middle of the book and then went back and started doing the beginning of the book and stuff like this and the art style is very reminiscent of you know underground comics i wouldn't call them indie comics but sort of underground comics you know it's very it's not well i guess it is stylized stylized according to his style right but it's you know reminiscent of the 1960s and 70s uh sort of robert crumb and uh uh, some of the other comics that I've shown you th through that period, through my collection, right? Um, and it sort of continues on like that, right? And his art style, I didn't really notice too much of a big difference in his art style for the characters. You know, the artists sort of, they're more um, harsh regarding their art than most critics are, right? The, the biggest critic of your own work it should be you, right? And the artist, you know, goes through explaining that, you know, he was trying to improve his, his art and all that jazz. And it's sort of this type of artwork. And it's well worth the read if you 
want to read Epic of Gilgamesh. It's an easier way to understand what's going on in the story arc than reading the text. Or the audiobook was easy to listen to because when I listened to the audiobooks, I just did things around the house, either did my gardening, took care of the plants, and listened to the audiobook. And it sort of uh, it had a nice flow. It sort of, uh, believe it or not, sort of had ASMR feel to it. It just really calmed me down listening to the audiobook and working with the plants and stuff like this, right? So it was very meditative, but I didn't really retain too much of the information when I listened to the audiobook. Maybe because I did this like. A long time ago like 15 18 years ago I listened to the audiobook and the book I read like 18 years ago around the same time right the reason I listened to the audiobook is because I read the text book format that it came but it didn't really sink in because there's so much going on so many words people jumping from here to here right uh, so I listened to the audiobook uh, to see if the story would sink in right and you know 18 years later 15 years later I find myself reading a graphic novel and now I can retain the information of the Epic of Gilgamesh. And this is the first graphic novel adaptation of Epic of Gilgamesh. This is the only one available as far as I know. Okay. Well worth the read if you like human history, if you like human artifacts, if you want to know where a lot of mythology comes from and what the foundation, the basis of most of the mythology that uh, the well-known mythology in the world that we know where it's based from, right? Okay, that's the graphic novel review I had. And just to let you know, we're live streaming this as well. And there's some comments being posted. I've mentioned to people that if uh, if there's anything they have to contribute regarding a comic book um, that I'm about to show you, uh, if they can post a comment, I'm going to scan the chat and I'll share that information if it pops up. Right. Uh, you should seek people that the title Woman, how are you doing? Um, okay, so let's do let me show you what we got. And here, let me show you the stack. Right. I think I showed it to you, but this is it. They're all dollar Canadian or less. Okay. And let me show you the first book. And this is sort of, you know, definitely a reader's copy, torn apart. And it's Magnus number 13. Okay. I've read this before. This must be, I don't know, either the third or fourth time I'm reading this. And it was a two-story arc for this. It's Magnus number 13 and Magnus number 14. And this is from the 1990s, early 1990s, uh, from the Valiant, uh, from the first Valiant launch. Uh, the, the company when it came out and Magnus was the first superhero title that they released right and this followed Magnus number 12 which was the first appearance of Turok um, dinosaur hunter right and this was a fantastic read I um, I wish I had number 14 as well because I want to read the continuation of this right the art style is I'm not sure what it is I don't think it's painted okay it's definitely got its own style. This is the only comic, Valiant comic, uh, that I know of that had this art style in it. Uh, and the artwork, it was written by Jim Shooter. Okay. And the art, uh, it was written by Jim Shooter and Faye Prozic. And the artist is Ernie Golden. Okay. And the reason I'm telling this is because I want to read a page of this for you guys okay and let me pop up for the people watching live let me pop up the page that we're gonna read okay because this page that you're gonna see right now right that you see right now is a fantastic introduction to the world of Magnus robot fighter right it's sort of I wouldn't say it's an origin story but it is part of the origin story and it lays down sort of what the world is and this is a futuristic right it's 4001 it sort of lays down explains to you what the world is that Magnus robot fighter and Rai um, exist in okay and this is I don't know this is towards the end of Magnus robot fighter number 13 
Okay, and it's this page right here that you see beside you that I'm going to read. And this is sort of, um, you know, there's a story building up to this. And Magnus is fighting this other powerful person, mutated person, right? And he really doesn't want to fight this person, but this person thinks Magnus represents something, right? Represents the establishment. And this other person is sort of, uh, fighting on behalf of the people that the establishment has been uh, has thrown aside right so this is the world of Magnus robot fighter okay and this is during a battle with Magnus and this person and something's happened and he's someone's thrown something electronic and this projection of one uh, 1a which is the robot that the sentient being that controls this world of 4001 where Magnus Robot Fighter exists right now, right? So the instrument is thrown and this electronic uh, sort of screen pops up, projection pops up, and this is what this 1A, this robot, this sentient being is stating, okay? I was created to serve in the military as a as a defender of North Am. And North Am is this civilization that exists, right? The city state, I guess. Early in my career, an accident gave me free will. I began to think independently, but remained dedicated to the goals of my original programming. I deserted um, I deserted because I knew I could operate more efficiently on my own. I took upon upon myself to ensure the preservation of Northam. Northam, where technology has eliminated want and need, where robots perform all labor freely, freeing humans to pursue bliss. It is utopia. Disruptive elements, including social deviant criminals and malcontents, are rehabilitated using mind-altering psychoprobes. This is good, the end of a tranquil, stable, well-ordered society. Justify such means, utopia must be protected at any cost. A few people flee to avoid the psychoprobes. True, true. But these are not worthy citizens, not decent, respectable people. They are goths who hide on the murky lower levels. They are potentially dangerous, but until they become a problem, I will ignore them. There is a far greater threat. The citizens of Noram have become so totally dependent upon their robot servants that the robots themselves are a danger if they're ro if they're danger. If their robots were turned against them, or if another free will arises less benevolent than I, who will, who will save them? I must create a robot fighter, an instrument with which to protect Utopia. Shook, shook. And then the robot, uh, what happens in the last panel is Magnus Robot Fighter punches the, the instrument, the technology that's you know, projecting this A1, uh, 1A's, uh, you know, monologue here, why he's saying where he came from and why he exists and why he created Magnus Robot Fighter, right? I thought this page was a fantastic little summary, sort of introduction to the world of Magnus Robot Fighter, okay? And it's issue number 13. And what happens, you know, I'm going to give you a little spoiler. Uh, basically, in this series, when it first starts, Magnus Robot Fighter, as the name implies, fights robots. He's there to protect the human from robot. And 1A is sort of the ruler that sort of sends Magnus to do certain things, right? And by this issue, later on in this issue, uh, well, I won't give you any spoilers if you want to read it, okay? Um, but there's a reason why Magnus punches the screen, right? Uh, and it's a fantastic science fiction series. It's one of the greatest series ever created, really. Uh, Magnus Robot Fighter in the world that exists, the existence is 
brilliant and one of the things about this whole thing that i wanted to read for you uh the reason was because recently i was uh watching uh or re-watching some of the stuff from prisoners of gravity and if you recall we put out a video uh call um sort of me talking about this show that exists in the late 1980s maybe just early 1990s uh, it ran for like three to four years it was sort of a local ontario tv program in toronto where it was um sort of one host where this host sort of interviewed and talked to comic book creators comic book writers and artists and science fiction and fantasy writers and um sort of world builders right and one of the uh one of the pro one of the episodes that i watched was about the dystopian society and one person one writer came on and said uh, or the utopian society right and one writer came on and said i forget who the writer was who the author was and which book they were talking about but they mentioned that there is no such thing as a, a utopia you can never have a utopia because in a utopia what you would have is basically a dystopia right everyone you know the concept of utopia uh, the end game the uh, the final road never re leads to a utopian society you're always just on the road to a utopian society okay um, so that's uh, that's Magnus robot fighter number three I thought uh, you'd find that interesting if you're into uh, science fiction okay uh, here's another book that I read okay and let me pull it out of a bag I just have it in this bag but you know again all of these are sort of on the discount shelves that I bought uh, I've read all of the, the someone's commenting on the live stream I've read all of the books that I'm showing you right now <laughs> okay here's the other book that I read and it's a more recent book okay it's infinity uh, by Hickman it was sort of a six issue series and I didn't pick it up when it first came out and I saw it for a dollar dollar Canadian 75 cents US right so I picked it up I wanted to read it right um, it didn't grab me I was not impressed and let me read you a panel the text from a panel and this text from this panel basically exp explains uh, why it really didn't do much for me and this is uh, towards the end of the book and it's Iron Man talking to Captain America this panel right here right and you know there's a whole bunch of stuff that happens here there's a gazillion different characters jumping around from world to world and it is the first issue it might have gotten better I don't know uh, but it didn't really get me to want to read more okay but here's what Iron Man says to Captain America before Captain America uh, takes off to do what it is that they're going to do with a whole bunch of people how about you just take care of this this is in quotation marks so Iron Man talking to Steve uh, to Captain America so how about you just take care of this I'm getting tired of end of the world scenarios be safe Steve right that's the reason you didn't really grab me I'm getting tired of end of the it's not even end of the world scenarios this thing that's happening right now it's end of the universe scenarios that's taking place right now so um, you know if you think it was a good read if you've read it let me know I might give it another shot uh, maybe pick up number two in the discount bin and read it okay here's another book that I picked up in the discount bins and I read and I really liked okay doomsday clock good read it was better than I expected uh, it had flaws it had flaws definitely it had flaws uh, with the original um, Watchmen series that this is based on the characters because what they're doing is they're taking the Watchmen characters Alan Moore and uh, given I forget who the other person the artist I'm sorry my apologies they've taken the world of the Watchmen and incorporating it with the DC universe the main characters of the DC universe okay and uh, it was a decent enough job the first Watchmen series I couldn't find any flaws this first read there were minor flaws but compared to this 
<laughs> this is a masterpiece, right? Very well done. Okay, well worth the read. At some point, uh, I don't think it's finished yet. They had delays in Doomsday Clock. At some point, I'll most likely buy the collected works and read the whole thing in one shot. Okay, but well worth the read. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, more so than I was expecting, really. More so than I was expecting. Okay, I spam a lot. Another book uh, that I read, now as you know, I'm collecting all the Valiants, right? I'm pulling all the Valiants, but I'm way behind on my reads. I haven't read continuing series Valiant uh, stuff I'm picking up. For a while, I've been reading some randoms. And this is the one of the randoms that was in the discount pin. I bought this when it first came out. Harbinger, Renegade number zero. Okay, let me take it out of the bag so hopefully there's less gloss. But when I was going through the discount bin, when I saw this, uh, I thought for you know dollar Canadian it was worth picking up and reading instead of me having to go through my boxes of finding it. Okay, good read, good read. There's a lot, lot happens here. We're sort of, um, I believe it's the second appearance of this character here. The first appearance of this character happens in. Harbinger Renegade number six. Okay. So it was it was good read. It had good artwork. Uh, and it got me interested into reading more of this event that's happening because this kicks into Harbinger Wars. It ends, uh, it takes off from a you know sort of a story arc that happened. Uh, it was called Massacre. And it continues into uh, builds up into Harbinger Wars number two, I believe. Anyway, that's the chronological chronology of it, but it's well worth the read. I was happy I picked this up and read it. Okay, okay. I'm pulling all the. Someone's mentioning. Uh, Zara's mentioning. Uh, I'm just going to read this because it's related to Doomsday Clock. Okay, I'm pulling all issues of Doomsday by monthly release. Makes it hard to retain store. Yeah, oh, so bi monthly. I didn't realize it was bi monthly. Uh, okay, cool. I saw somebody. Cool. Uh, okay, so it's bi-monthly, so I'm glad I'm holding off on reading Doomsday Clock until it's all released. Okay, here's another book I picked up. I won't take it out of the bag. This is uh, Cerebus and How. Actually, let me take it out of the bag. Okay. Now, this is Dave Sim. And Dave Sim is one of the people basically uh, he put out a 300 issue series of Cerebus the artwork right uh, our I can't, I, can't, I keep on messing up the words but Cerebus right 300 issue series he's put out number one in 1977 right it's a masterpiece uh, of storytelling at least to the point where I read it the first I believe most people would agree the first 150 issues of Cerebus, I haven't read all 150, I've read a nice chunk. Uh, Church and State is amazing, the story of Church and State. I believe that starts off with number 50, 51 or something like this. This is Cerebus. And if you've never read Cerebus, I highly recommend picking up Cerebus, uh, even starting off uh, from number one or starting off from where Church and State, the story arc from Church and State starts off right and I believe this is uh, the sort of one of the few uh, Cerebus books have come out since the series and I believe the series ended in the early 2000s or so okay and as someone and this is Dave Sam by the way right here right this is this guy right and he was uh, if you watch one of my previous videos uh, I went to university in the town that he was operating he was living in and the comic store that he was going at where he, as a childhood person he bought his comic books and stuff like this so I know a little bit about Dave Sim I've read uh, and I've read uh, you know relative to some people I've read very few Cerebus comic books but I've read some of his books and those are amazing fantastic this is sort of a pale reflect reflection of what Cerebus is all about right and it's not really 
related to the Cerebus story arc. Okay, this is Dave Sam sort of uh, vomiting, <laughs> vomiting onto the pages of you know his ideas, uh, random as they are, and putting them on paper and you know pasting them together. Each one of these pages and he has it like this and I I saw this on the shelf when it first came out and I didn't pick it up but it's basically you know each one of these four panels pages is sort of like a comic strip right and the comic strips of these are sort of on the same level of a news uh, of a university newspaper comic strip okay so that's the level that they're at there is a deeper sort of message that Dave Sim is sharing there because he is he is brilliant as chaotic as it is right uh, he is an amazing storyteller right but this isn't really a coherent story where you're going from one page to another each one of these pages could be in a university newspaper as a comic strip to as a pun as a as a stab at civilizations, as a stab uh, to the artists themselves, right? There's a little bit of, I don't know what it's called, sadomasochist or whatever it is, sort of self-harm in this. But for me, knowing, you know, a little bit about Dave Sim, reading a little bit about Cerebus, okay, and some of the controversy involving Dave Sim and all that jazz, I found it enjoyable, okay? Because it sort of showed me the state of mind that Dave Sim is in. And he just recently, in the last couple of years or so, put up a YouTube channel where he's making videos and he's got a Twitter feed and, you know, he's sharing information. Last year, a couple of years ago, he actually put out a message, uh, put out a video saying that the warehouse that they were storing a lot of the Cerebus comics, right, like his the printed copies, the stuff that he had in storage, the storage house was closing down and he had to get rid of his comics. So he put out a little video saying, as long as you're willing to um, pay for the shipping, he would send you the comics for free. So a lot of people took advantage of that. I tried to get some here as well, but I didn't get my hands on any. I contacted them and I talked to one of the associates of Dave Sam, but I wasn't able to get any shipped out to me. Okay. Uh, so if you're a Cerebus, Dave Sim, if you want to know where he's at mentally, it's okay, okay, worth it. And this was uh, sort of the intro number zero. And at the back here, he has he released four more Cerebus in Hell. And I picked up another one I had in the bins that was Cerebus in Hell number three. I believe it was this one. And I'll add it, I've added it to my pile, and this is just basically from my pile. I might give it a read, I might not, because I right now I have a pretty good idea of <laughs> the state of mind of uh, Dave Sim, right? Here's another book that I read, uh, and I liked, intrigued me, and I wouldn't mind reading more of. Okay, Holy Grail. This is number one. Okay, I picked this up when it first came out, I believe, but I didn't, you know, read it, so I didn't pick up number two or three or anything like this. And this is Colin Bunn. And it's a sort of a take on King Arthur and Excalibur and Merlin. Well, Excalibur hasn't, well, I guess Excalibur is about to come in towards the end of this, right? But Merlin and stuff like this. And I like the take. So I, if you like sort of British mythology, um, I would recommend this, right? Uh, issue number one was pretty good. Pick up issue number one. You should be able to get it on the cheap. I picked this up again in the dollar bins, right? And it's basically very fine condition after me you know very fine plus or near mint it was near mint minus when i picked it up and it's probably very fine minus now because i took this to the beach and read it <laughs> so it was it was a good read i highly recommend uh if you like you know king arthur and excalibur and the knights and stuff like this worth the read worth the read okay here's another book and this is uh, put out by Aftershock, by the way. 
And uh, as you know, I started reading Aftershock comics basically from day one when they started putting stuff out. Some of their original, some of the first stuff that they put out a few years ago, about five, six years ago, they came out, right? And uh, I've, I like some of their series. I'm pulling some of their series, right? Uh, I loved, I, it stopped, but I loved Super Zero, sort of from the first wave of Aftershock comics coming out. Super Zero and Replica and stuff like this. <laughs> We're streaming this live, and I mentioned to people that I'm mainly going to read, the, people are uh, chatting away, and I've mentioned that I'm mainly going to be reading, commenting to articles that are related to the comic books that I'm showing and then later on when we finish this recording I go back to the live stream and uh, and read the comments and interact with people right so people are chatting away there um, this is something that I picked up from free comic book day okay and I highly recommend first uh, May free comic book day when is it? first Saturday in May March oh I forget what it is someone might correct me on this right uh, and this is called The Mall. Hatfield and Hake, Lorado. I don't, you know, it's from Scout Comics. I've shown you guys some comics that I bought from Scout Comics, and I like Scout Comics, right? And this is called The Mall. And after reading this one, I'm interested in reading more. Okay. It was a good story. It was heartfelt. Uh, you fell in love with the characters right away. Okay. And by the way, let me show you the artwork for this, the Holy Grail, right? Here's the artwork for the Holy Grail. It's nice, enjoyable artwork. Now, I highly recommend Aftershock Comics. Someone mentioning Aftershock Comics is their preferred publication. Yeah, I like Aftershock. It's uh, Image, Valiant, Aftershock, Scout Comics, um, Black Masks. Those are some of the publishers that I buy. Uh, buy from but this was very good. I liked I liked the story. Okay. I won't show you the last page I don't want to give any spoilers uh, But this is sort of the story arc or the artwork and the story is about you know high school kid um, and uh, uh, There's sort of uh, you know in the first couple of pages you realize that you know, he's inherited a, a store and he's part of a sort of a family uh, gangsters right sort of the mob and he's part of that family and he's doing deals on the side and stuff like this uh, it was good and it's a teenager's perspective and he he's in love and all that jazz and I really found the character very endearing very endearing okay now as you know I've been reading a lot of true believer stuff and this is fantastic for Galactus hungers okay and this is uh, the story is by Roy Thomas, and the artwork is John Boshima, and this is this is the original cover, Fantastic Four One Seventy Five. Okay, and it was a good read. I liked it. I liked these uh, sort of sixties, seventies, eighties comic books. This is, I believe, in the seventies. Uh, how much was the cover? The cover was thirty cents, so it would have been in the late seventies, mid seventies or so. But the artwork is nice. It's John Boshima, classic. Worth the read. The True Believers, uh, about 80% or so, you know, throwing percentages uh, as if they're, they're meaningful, like uh, I've taken stats on it or uh, I've crushed the numbers, but, uh, you know, majority of True Believers I've been reading, uh, they're worth the read. They're worth the read. There are some which I'm surprised on. I was like, wow, why they reprint this one? This is, I don't know what issue this is from. This is Wolverine Evolution. I guess it would have been a standalone. Another True Believers. Uh, I read some of the, you know, in the previous reads, video reads that we did, I showed you some of the other True Believers that I read. Some of them were mm, iffy. This one was not bad. It sort of solidified the relationship between Wolverine and uh, Sabretooth. Uh, sort of gave us a little bit background. And, you know, it's got a lot, a lot of fight scenes and stuff, but it gave us a little bit of a history. Of what happened, what transpired between Wolverine and Sabretooth, and why Sabretooth has uh, uh, has been hounding 
Wolverine for so long okay and why Wolverine totally detests Sabretooth it was worth the read worth the read okay true believers exiles number one right this is I believe it's from exiles should be from exiles number one okay I believe that's the original cover maybe it was a virgin cover or something like this and this was written by uh, who was it written by was it Hickman no uh, Jod Winnick oh Jod Winnick nice Jod Winnick is uh, Barry Wynn where are we Barry Wynn Barry Wynn Adventures of Barry Wynn Adventures of Barry Wynn where is Adventures of Barry Wynn I can't see it Adventures of Barry Wynn what's going on where's my Adventures of Barry Wynn maybe it's not here should be here I'm just not seeing it so it's by Jod Winnick and pencils are by Mike McCone inks by Mark M McKenna okay um, it was a fun read it was okay the artwork was sort of in a slapstick format to a certain degree and A lot of color background so there isn't a lot of detail in it okay but not bad it didn't want me to read anymore uh, but as a standalone single if you want to read a sort of a superhero deal uh, it's okay okay here's another true believers death of Phoenix I believe this is uh, Grant Morrison. Should be anyway. Uh, da -da 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 that's is it Grant Morrison? Yeah, Grant Morrison. Uh, film Jamez is pencils and cover and stuff like this, and inks is Andy Lanning. Right. The artwork is nice. The story again. It's uh, I've read a f you know a fair bit of Grant Morrison's X Men so this is i believe towards the end of the arc okay i didn't read this far so it was fun reading this to see where it was going right um it was okay uh, i like the earlier issues of grant morrison's work uh, that i read um, and this wasn't bad this was pretty good but because i have a little gap between where I left off and where this takes continues on from um, I think my emotional attachment had decreased a lot for the characters uh, okay it's a nice three at some point I will sit down and continue Grant Morrison's X-Men from where I left off Phoenix bizarre adventures again true believers And these true believers that's one of the reasons I just started reading randoms so many of them right so this is the original uh, cover for it and I don't understand Marvel they keep on sometimes they put the original covers in there sometimes they don't sometimes they put in the back sometimes they put in the front not consistent right um, but this is uh, I believe this is written by Chris should be Chris Claremont I believe so anyway I believe this is Claremont for some reason yeah it was written by Chris, uh, Chris Claremont and pencils by John, by John Boshima and ink inks by Klaus uh, Jason right Jansen and the artworks beautiful and it's well worth the read it was fun I love reading Chris Claremont's X-Men uh, fantastic reads uh, he has a sort of an endearing quality to the books that he writes to the characters that he writes uh, with the X-Men anyway I want to show you double pages here right so take a look let's see if this focuses right. nice artwork it's a story about uh, Jean Grey Phoenix and slowly Phoenix rising I guess right 
Ant-Man presents Iron Man. This is really just Iron Man. I don't know why they put Ant-Man in there. <laughs> They're pushing the Ant-Man, right? True believers. This should be Iron Man 219. So this would have been the 80s, right? That's the cover. Uh, it was okay. Not a bad read. Uh, and again, who was the who were the writers? Oh, Marvel! Where do you put the writers and creators of this? We don't know. Not in the front. Okay. Check this out. All right. Straight out, you know. Simple panels, panel layouts. Okay. If you like Iron Man, it's worth the read. True Believers. Read a lot of True Believers back to back. And this is sort of the order that I read them and that I've piled it up, right? Uh, Fantastic Four. John Byron's Fantastic Four. Okay. And it's Fantastic Four 232. Not a bad read. Self-contained story. So it was nice just sitting down and just reading a self-contained story. Fantastic Four. These are true believers that we're releasing with just building up to um, the Fantastic Four number one release, right? And this is Fantastic Four 209 reprint of it. Right, all true believers are reprints, and this was by Marv Wolfman uh, and John Byron and Joe Sinat. Okay. Uh, it was good. It wasn't bad. You know, here's the artwork and stuff like this. Beginning of an epic story. This was being given away for free, so I picked it up and just flipped through it. Just the pencils for Amazing Spider-Man number one. Uh, the new one that came out. Right? So it was just fun flipping through it. True Believers, Fantastic Four, Walter Simpson. Right. Again, the beginning, telling the story of the beginning of an epic story arc. Fantastic Four, 337. This would have been the early 90s. Okay, reprint of that. Not bad. It was very Kirby-ish to a certain degree with time and universe and folding of space and stuff like this. Not bad. I've never been a huge Fantastic Four fan. Uh, so here's Fantastic Four, The Birth of... Valeria. Okay. And this is. See, here's the kicker. They don't have the cover from before, so you don't really know a reprint of what unless you read the fine print. And the fine print says it. Da, 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 da. Contains material originally published in magazine form as Fantastic Four 54. Published as a one-shot by Marvel Comics, blah, 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 blah. and it doesn't have the date of the original publication. Okay, but and we don't have the price of the original publication. But with based on the artwork, check this out. Marvel's got advertisement on each one. Each second, based on the artwork, it would have been in the late '90s or early 2000s, maybe. Okay, I believe. Zara's asking if I'm reading the new Venom. Yeah, I'm picking it up. I read issue number three with the white cover with Venom and falling down and the mouth coming up. And I, I, I believe I read issue number four with the origin of uh, Call, 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 Call. I like it. I didn't pick up the first two though. So 
I'm not going to read anymore until I get the first two. Yeah, for sure. A different take on the symbiote story, right? Foom, number one. This came out a while ago. And I've been, you know, I've had it out. I've been reading some of the articles and stuff like this. Sort of magazine, sort of. Foom is a series that they put out in the 1960s. Foom had the first appearance of the X-Men, I believe, Uncanny X-Men, before the Uncanny X-Men, with uh, 95 or something like this. I can't remember, really. But it's a magazine format that Marvel Comics put out uh, in the 1960s, so, so they revamped it. I don't know if there's a Foom tour or not, but it's basically articles telling what Marvel was doing and whatnot. Uh, sort of sort of a promo piece that they've put out okay fantastic four versus the fantastic four okay this was okay so this is fantastic four 374. So it came out in the mid 1990s. Okay. You can tell by the price tag as well, $1.25. Uh, it was an okay read. Uh, the first time that Wolverine, Ghost Rider, Hulk, and Spider Man, I think it was those uh, four that took over as a Fantastic Four. I don't know if it was the first time or not. It was 361, 64, something like this. It was a few issues before this one came out. So this one is sort of the human torch has gone nova and uh, he's on the run so spider-man gets together with whatnot and uh, hulk and ghost rider and wolverine to try to track him down and it was okay right if you were reading fantastic four at the time this would have been a sort of a two or three issue run and it's sort of a filler it wasn't uh, it didn't get it has some personal moments but it was it was an okay read it wasn't bad i reread ninjack number one from valiant comics okay found it in the dollar bins i just want to read it again good story good story um i've read a few issues of this i dropped it uh not dropped it, I kept on picking it up, but I didn't continue reading it uh, for, you know, I haven't finished this series, and Ninjak has come back. After this, they've released another series called Ninja K. So Ninjak, really, we will find out Ninjak really is Ninja K. It's sort of like Weapon X, I guess, right? Weapon X isn't really Weapon X, it's Weapon 10. Right, so Ninja K, they did the alphabet in this. And it was a good story, and it's the first appearance of Roku, this character right here. Let me show you Roku. And Roku is a main character. Uh, where is Roku? Come on. This is Roku right here. Right there, right? First full appearance of Roku. Uh, it's a nice character, Roku, actually. And that's a good series. If you want to read Ninja, you know what it's all about. Well worth reading. True believers, what if Spider-Man joined the Fantastic Four? More Fantastic Four, true believer stuff that came out. Uh, this one was actually a fun read. It's sort of the watcher, you know, telling the story, recapping some of the stuff that happened. And this was a, a what if reprint. I don't know what if, which number it was. It'll be in the fine print, but. Uh, this reprint of what if number one that's cool and is Roy Thomas and Roy Thomas is an amazing writer I love Roy Thomas's work where are we right there Roy Thomas's work uh, from uh, Conan the Barbarian right uh, nice artwork right splash pages and just mixing it up and who did the artwork Jim Craig and Pablo Marco. Okay. Pencils and inks. Again, very copious. Big panel looking down. Cool angles. 
Uh, it was worth the read. I liked it. And it's basically exactly what it says. Uh, what if Spider-Man joined the Fantastic Four? Okay. Animosity from Aftershock Comics. Rise, number one. Okay. And this is sort of, uh, it's not the original, like the original Animosity series. It's Animosity Rise. Okay. So it's sort of a parallel uh, story arc being told in the same universe, same timeline. Uh, and it goes back to the beginning of what happened. Uh, well worth the read. Margaret Bennett and uh, Juan Do. The artwork. Animal Sod Animal City is worth reading. Aftershock comics again, they're worth reading. Oh, I got I have one more copy of Exiles number one. I'll put this one on the side. Oh, here's another one of the same one evolution. So I must have picked up two. Check this out. Fantastic for the coming of Galactus. Right? First appearance, I believe it's the first appearance of Silver Surfer. Uh, yeah. Uh, Fantastic Four number 48. Okay. First appearance of Silver Surfer. And should be. Yeah, first appearance of Silver Surfer. Right. And Galactus, I believe, makes a little appearance of that, doesn't he? Check out Galactus in his original colors. Right. Galactus in his original colors. Right. And this was, uh, it should be Stan Lee, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby uh, is a penciler, and Joe Sinnott, uh, inker, and Artie Simic, I don't know, I guess he'd be the letter, right? Here's the first page on it, worth reading. And uh, just a story regarding this. Uh, it's basically Jack Kirby that created that, right? Jack Kirby, uh, Stanley had laid out, you know, very general, broad stroke, what he was thinking, and Jack Kirby did all the details. And with the details, I mean, he put in the Silver Surfer in there. Like, Stanley had no idea what the Silver Surfer was, right? So Jack Kirby created the Silver Surfer, right? So he put it in there. Right, and then Stan Lee filled in the bubbles after the art was done. So the dialogue wasn't done before the art, the art was done before the dialogue, sort of the Marvel way, I believe that's what it's called. Um, so straight out of the minds of Jack Kirby comes the Fantastic Four, number 48, the first appearance of Silver Surfer and Galactus. Right. Ant-Man and the Wasp on the trail of Spider-Man, true believers. Uh, this is uh, Tales to Astonish 57. Okay, reprint of Tales to Astonish 57. It was okay, it was silly. Okay. Brilliantly written. I'll read you that. Brilliantly written by good old Stan Lee. Uh, bashfully drawn by Dick Ayers. Right, Dick Ayers, fantastic. Same guy that did the cover for one of the comics we published, right? Uh, Lander number one, right? Boldly Ink by Painful Old Paul Raymond, right? Lettered by um, S. Rosen. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Tales to Astonish number 57. It was okay. It's very 60s comic book. Uh, the, the heroes, you know, they had their PhD. You know, Ant Man has a PhD or Giant Man has a PhD. And you know, he's a genius, and Spider Man is pretty smart, and stuff like this. But they get into fist fights for the silliest reasons, right? This type of storytelling would not hold up now, at present. Okay, at the time, it was all self contained, and they had to have a reason to create conflict. Justice League, number 13. Justice League versus Suicide Squad, number 13, tie-in. Right? It was okay. It was a dollar thing. Uh, I picked it up to read it. 
just to see where things are going. The artwork's nice. It's okay. And who are the writers for this? Do we know? Do we know? Do we know? Do they even do? Usually they have it on the splash page. They say who the artists and writers are, but we don't know. Uh, is it a masterpiece? Definitely not. Does it lead up to something? I don't know. It kicks something up. Uh, they try to, you know. Uh, next, to be going to Justice League versus Suicide Guy 61. Welcome to Calypso. So it's Calypso doing his thing. It was okay. Uh, there's much better comics I would recommend. Such as this one, believe it or not. I enjoyed this read. It was fun. I liked the characters. Sea of Thieves. Titan Comics, number one. Okay. If you like pirates, fun characters, this, I would say, is uh, okay for all readers based on the first issue. Okay. The art style is nice. I like that. Okay. There are fight scenes and stuff, but it's pirates. They're following pirates around, and there's, you know, in Seek of a Treasure and Seek of a Map. Uh, and it was a fun read. If I was, uh, uh, if I was into reading something like this, humor, this has humor in it, right? A little bit of conflict and stuff like this. I would read this, or I would, you know, give this as a present to someone who's uh, of age to be able to read something like this. Right? Harbinger from the original series. Number 14. Worth the read. I liked it. But I'm a valiant, uh, valiant lover, right? For the first uh, beginning of the 1990s, and obviously the relaunch as well, right? Uh, written by Maurice F Fontet, pencils by Howard Simpson, ink by Gonzalo Mayo. This really, Mayo, this kicks off from Unity, okay? To a certain degree, we see the events from Unity. This is from Unity taking place, um, if you want to know, sort of recapping. It's an important book, actually, in the Valiant universe. Recapping what happened, and it ties into Magnus, Robot Fighter, and whatnot. Um, but I highly recommend not just picking this up to read it. Uh, Unity is a must read for the Valiant Universe. Uh, pre Unity and Unity, and a few issues after Unity. Uh, this sort of a very tight storytelling, very tight storytelling. Okay. Another one I picked up, and again, these are from the dollar stores, uh, from the dollar bins, right? I just wanted to reread them. And I've read these ones before, obviously. Uh, but Harbinger number 12. Uh, it was a good read. Very good read. Uh, I had read this before again, right? Fun read. Sort of telling you, recapping some of the stuff with Flamingo and whatnot. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Solar, Man at the Atom, number 23. I'm not sure if I've shown you this before. This rings a bell that I've shown you. I might have mentioned it, I think, in a previous uh, haul. Okay. And this was good. Kevin Van Hook is a writer. Peter Guru pencils. Stan Drake inker. Uh, the colors, again, in Valiant Universe were brilliant. The solar man at the atom was fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful. Really. Just vibrant coloring. Nice storytelling. Master Dark comes into play in this one. Right? Very nice. Very nice. Check out Master Dark. One of the greatest villains in comic book history. Really. Valiant has two of the greatest villains in comic book history. Master Dark and Harad. I would add, I would make it three. The Eternal Enemy is amazing. 
this character in uh, Harbinger Renegade number zero that you learn a little bit more about him. Fantastic character. Solomon, fantastic character. The evil, uh, for a lot of comic books, is the villains that really make the comic book. May it be Batman or Spider-Man or whatnot. They got some of the best villains. Valiant has some of the best villains in the comic book universe. Right, beautiful. Nice storytelling. And on that note, check this out. Solar, Man of the Atom, number four. Nice read. Nice read. I believe this would have been Jim Shooter. Number 14, not number four. Number 14. Should be Jim Shooter. Yeah, Jim Shooter. Story by Jim Shooter and Steve Ditko. Really? Wow. What? Written by Kevin Van Hook. Penciled by Steve Ditko. Penciled by Steve Ditko. Finished in inks by Howard Simpson and Paul Otto. Cover color by Miko Cavallero. Take a look at this artwork. Really? Fantastic. Right? Steve Ditko recently, I believe, passed away. Right, take a look at this. Nice storytelling. Beautiful storytelling. <laughs> well worth the read. Solar Man of the Atom, uh, up to the mid 20s or so, from the first Valiant relaunch. Uh, it was fantastic. My Hero Academia, free comic book day. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. It was a fun read. I loved the animation. I've, I've watched the first series of My Hero Academia. Oh, fantastic. I still have, haven't watched the second series yet, or second season. Yeah. Black and white manga. Some people have asked me if I read manga before. I, re I do pick up randoms and I read them. Uh, nothing close to, you know, Western comics. Check this out. Fun. Fun book. This was also a fun book. The Legend of Korra. Free comic book day. Okay. Avatar. Fantastic. Fantastic stuff. Right? The animated series. I've watched that series twice. And I watched all of Korra as well. Right. Korra, I thought, was a little bit... Uh, too intense too mature and had some political overtones to it uh, that I didn't like that avatar was more chill on uh, but again I like this it was a good read okay and G rated to a certain degree on the same level as thief of uh, the pirate one sea of thieves okay <coughs> Generations, the mighty Thor, the unworthy Thor. Okay. This was uh, it was a good read. Uh, it was fun in terms of Thor lore, I guess, mythology, right? Uh, the artwork was decent, decent enough, but it didn't really grab me to read more. Okay. Free comic book day, world's greatest cartoon, cartoonists. Right? Not bad. It's sort of a mix of, again, very, we looked at uh, Dave Sims, The Service in Hell. I would say this is more intricate. Uh, well, no, sorry, uh, The Epic of Gilgamesh, right? I would sort of say, check this out. Some of the stuff was iffy, right? Some of the artwork 
right? you know, self-indulgent to a certain degree is, is very much in line with Dave Sims cartoon style so this is something that you would uh, get through you know university sort of comic strips with that kind of artwork free comic book day DC Supergirls mm. it didn't really do anything <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it to children either <laughs> okay it's just uh, uh, they should stay true to the characters I think even on that level um, for example promoting Harley Quinn to tweens I don't think that's the best idea in the world right I would pass on that um, it was just worth picking up and reading flipping through random 25 cents everything you need to know about Michael Turner's Phantom right so the first issue I believe it's the first one from Aspen Comics by the way and uh, I think it was sort of lost in the 90s check that out right 90s artwork style which is okay um, check this out right. uh, but I you know had no desire to pick up any more of this I've read some Aspen comics in the past uh, and I've had the same feeling with Aspen comics as I had for this one okay Free comic book day. Young Yonex Studios Malika. Okay. I can see where they're going and stuff, but the story had lots of holes, lots of gaps, lots of jumping around. Uh, as an indie, it was worth the effort right uh, hopefully they continued this and I believe they have if they're releasing a free comic book day so I believe they build on these characters or they plan on building on these characters it'd be interesting to see how they evolve um, okay nice try as an indie I guess bongo free for all this was fun Simpsons all right really it was a fun read I enjoyed it very much the artwork is obviously Simpsons comics right it was worth it I might have actually read this before uh, uh, so it was worth reread if I read it before it just seemed familiar to me a little bit right Fun. maybe you've seen it I've seen one of the episodes where they're doing some of the things here okay before people have mentioned uh, Lovecraft right free comic book day a comic book day big book of summer fun So there was a couple of stories here. One of them was this. Right. It was Edgar Allan Poe's, I believe. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, H.P. Lovecraft, sorry. H.P. Lovecraft is one of the world's greatest horror authors, right? So it basically takes one of the poems, one of the stories of Lovecraft and shares it. Okay. And then there's another story going on here steam engines of Oz this was interesting as well nice science fiction okay story Tom 
Right? A sort of a random read, not bad. It was okay. <laughs> this was <laughs> this was interesting. Uh, again, free comic book day. I pick up a lot of free comic book day stuff and read them over the over the year if I need them. The author of the Lovecraft uh, one. Let's check it out. I believe it's Lovecraft. It's just. The artist, someone in the comments is asking who the creators of these are. Da -da 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 is Sean Patrick or Riley? So you Arcana Studios. Uh, there's nothing here. There's a couple stories from Lovecraft. The Undersea Kingdom. Howard Lovecraft. And the Frozen Kingdom, the Undersea Kingdom, there might have been three actually. Let's check this out. Animated feature film. At the end they have something, the conclusion will be revealed in the third animated feature film. Howard Lovecraft and the Kingdom of Madness, so part three of that is there. Uh, official selection of Spring International, the Frozen Kingdom. Uh, oh, there we go. In the advertisement you can see so that's the last page and then they have a little ad here and that is Jane Curtin and Ron Perman with Christopher Plummer Howard Lovecraft and the Frozen Kingdom so I'm assuming it's the same people that created the animation that have put this together okay uh, is there is that's what I'm that's what I'm assuming I don't know too much about it and here let me show you the cover again so you should be able to through that find the additional info online if you're interested in that okay uh, this one again was from free comic book day Ian Boothy and Nina Matsumoto sparks okay it was a fun read for children's book it was a fun read okay it's uh <laughs> right really uh i enjoyed it it made me laugh it made me go what right which is good storytelling from comics to a certain degree you should do uh and would pick this up at random again and add characters that you got interested in okay any comic book that puts out characters in one issue that you find interesting has done a fantastic job with their work right that's the key to good comic book storytelling if you care about the characters in one single issue it doesn't make a difference if, if it's the first issue or middle of an arc or end of a story or whatever it is right uh, again free comic book day lady mechanica i read some lady mechanica before uh, includes the first story the demon uh, of satan's ally plus a new all new story too okay I hadn't read these stories before. Okay. Uh, the artwork was decent enough. I'm assuming maybe Lady Mechanica came out. I don't know too much about Lady Mechanica. If it came out in the 90s, might have been, or early 2000s or so. But the art style is nice. I just didn't find the story too engaging for my like right i love the universe i love the world the steampunk sort of feel to it the artwork is for sure nice but it's not something that would you know dive into personally okay, okay read and it would definitely have its appeals <laughs> check this out 
again, free comic book day. Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Zero's Journey. And it's sort of uh, done in manga format. Starts off from the left side, goes to the right. right? It was okay. I love A Nightmare Before Christmas, the movie. Right? But I've yet to read anything in comic book form, which got me engaged or interested the way the movie did. Okay. <laughs> this, I read it again. Scotty Young's I Hate Image. Fantastic. Highly recommend reading this. Very good. If you know about Image Comics. Okay. The artwork's brilliant. Fantastic. And this is Scotty Young. Uh, just going, going at it. Just tearing image creators apart in a fun way. And their books. This is true. Right? <laughs> Gertrude going through and killing image. Killing the creators, killing, killing the characters, just going on a massacre. Very reminiscent of Lobo and the last of Zarnia, just going ballistic and just, or Lobo and almost anything, just going ballistic and just <laughs> shooting everything up. <laughs> right, take a look at that. Fun. This was one of the best uh, free comic day books I've read. Okay. Got to love it. Got to love it. Maxwell's Demons. Check it out. Free comic book day. You can get a lot of great reads during free comic book day. So if you, uh, you know, when the time comes, just look up free comic book day and find a store near you and uh, go pick up all the comics you want and you can get a fair bit. You know, comic shops do put limits on them, and they do sell out. Like people come and grab them, uh, but usually the next day they have a whole bunch laid out. So if you go to a comic store the day after, you can go the day of the free comic book day and get a bunch of comic books, whatever their limit is, if they have a limit. But in the next day, if next few days, you can go and pick up anything else you didn't get. That's why I have sometimes double copies. Sometimes, you know, I'm in one city or another city. I just go and. I don't know if I read it, but this was very good. Beautiful artwork. I enjoyed the story. Really. It was mature. It was intelligent. Uh, the artwork was very good. Okay. Delving into the child's imagination. Dealing with their life. Uh, beautiful artwork. I'd be into picking up more of this. And this is Vault Comics, and I've read some stuff. This is their logo. Read some stuff from Vault Comics before, right? And it's uh, it's worth it. Uh, they put out some good stuff. Okay. And here he is back. Okay. Maxwell's Demons. I'll keep this in mind. Free Comic Book Day, 2017 Summer Blast. This was a fun read as well. G-rated. Uh, the main, uh, the main story anyway, Monster City. Uh, this beginning one was interesting, beautiful artwork. Mouse Guard, the tale of the uh, Wild Wolf story and art. David uh, Peterson. Take a look. Beautiful artwork. This guy's artwork should uh, uh, should be used uh, for uh, for books as well, for children's books. Beautiful artwork. You know, I can only zoom in so much. The thing getting right. Nice artwork. Nice story. 
meaningful. Okay. And Monster City. I enjoyed this one a lot too. This story. Monster City. Okay. And you like the characters right off the bat. Free comic book day. This was sort of a promo short little thing they sent out, uh, sponsored by League, Justice League 2. It's very small, very thin. It was okay. Right? I like the Injustice series. Uh, I read some of the original ones. Uh, this was interesting as well. I'd, I'd be... It was a good read if I was into it. Uh, if I was still reading the Injustice stuff. This was sort of a random Star Wars. Free preview Star Wars reads. I'm not really reading any Star Wars comics right now. Uh, the artwork was good. But I've sort of had my fill of Star Wars. I rather read uh, sci-fi that uh, delivers every time instead of every now and then randomly very few times. Street Angels Dog. Free comic book there. And who's this by? This is Image Comics. A fun read, right? You like the character, it was a little trippy, a little weird. Uh, fun read, not bad. The artwork was cool. It's about this girl, homeless girl. I don't know anything about this, this is the first time I've read uh, this character. Okay. But worth the read. Jim Jug and Brian. Maruka. Okay. Hi, Maruka. Fun. Oh, here's another one. <laughs> Check this out. Another Bongo and Maxwell's Demons. I'm going to put these over here. Check out this one. We only got like three more, two more. Oh, I got one more of the original. Here, I'll show you this one too. I got one more copy of. Uh, the Book of Summer Fun as well. So I'm going to put this one here. They're doubles. This one, Star Burns presents Free Comic Book Day. Yeesh, tough crowd. Check this out. Well, I should put it out here. Can you see? Okay. Pat Olson, Dan Harmon, Eric M. Esquiv. It was fun. It was sort of spoof. Right? Check out the artwork. Cool artwork. I enjoyed it. Right. Sort of anthology. Here's a, the art from another story. Right. And here's Hilarious. Don't torture yourself. That's her job. All right, check this out. This is another story that was in there. Nice read. These little just standalone stories, they're fun, right? They're fun reads. Here's another one. This was interesting, actually, this last bit. It was okay. Sound bites. Okay. Starburns presents. And who is this? SBI Press. These are the guys here. SBI Press. This is their logo. Okay. So they put a whole bunch of little things that they were putting together and sort of sent it out. Right. Ian Fleming's. James Bond, Virgo, 
It's free comic book day, Warren Ellis. Right? There's Warren Ellis. This guy. It was okay. Um, I used to like James Bond a lot uh, back in the day, but I don't really follow any James Bond movies anymore or read any James Bond comics. I picked this one up just to see what it was like. It wasn't bad. Interesting. If you're into uh, this kind of story, uh, I would definitely recommend Ninjak over this personally, but I have a personal uh, preference to the Valiant comics, right? And I was expecting a little bit more intense from Warren Ellis. Uh, but Warren Ellis builds up his stories over time, right? Over a few issues. So, uh, you know, I haven't given this enough time or a chance to grab me uh, for first issue it wasn't bad uh, the last one in my reads that I've read so far the only living boy under the light of the broken moon okay this one is this free yeah this is free comic book day as well okay it wasn't bad it, I did I sort of want to sidelines with this. It has potential. Uh, it could be a lot more than what was here. And maybe it is. Okay. Uh, writer, co creator David uh, Galler, artist, co creator Steve Ellis, art recomposition Jen uh, Lightfoot, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, it had potential. It had potential, okay. The only living boy. Uh, I don't know anything else about this. Sort of endearing to a certain degree, but it had huge gaps. It jumped all over the place. Not jumped all over the place, but there was. It rushed the story a little bit, I guess. Okay. And uh, those are the reads that I have, and I have a whole bunch of stuff here. You know, my pile. I still have another pile going but it's not as large as this so you know my pile gets bigger and bigger but here's what I've uh, I got a few other things that I'm reading here I won't bother showing you right now there might to read this but I'll show you the next one that I'm going to read which is Kitty Pride and Wolverine uh, number one and I have this series this is a this was a four issue miniseries that came out in the 1980s I believe and it's Chris Claremont should be anyway okay so this is uh, a six issue limited series this is the original cover so it's a reprint of this right okay and it's uh chris claremont i believe uh yeah the writer is chris claremont and alan Mil Mil milgrom is the artist and here's the first page and chris claremont uh especially x-men have a lot of this just one page splash page at the beginning with text telling you what's going on right we did we did one reading of these um, for classic x-men story with uh, Jean Grey uh, but this is one I'm gonna read in the next couple of days maybe even today when I get a chance okay uh, so this is the next one I'm gonna read and I love Chris Claremont's uh, storytelling really uh, it's beautiful it's well paced uh, you like the characters right off the bat or you feel for the characters right off the bat you don't have to like them necessarily it might be the evil evil they might be the villains right uh, but you end up liking the characters getting involved with the story so that's what I got lined up to read next uh, plus some other ones from my pull list and things I bought off the racks in the last couple of weeks two or three weeks uh, that I hope to read okay uh that's what i wanted to do i wanted to show you guys what i'm reading uh that way i can put these away and start another pile and uh, in a couple of months two or three months um we'll uh, go through that again but we're gonna we're getting into the comic book readings right now most likely next week we're gonna start those up so the odds are uh what i end up reading is we're gonna be shooting videos on uh so we'll do the readings together we'll do them live maybe all of them live i'm not 100 sure how that's going to work out and uh, most definitely be recording a fair bit of comic book readings uh, that we're going to do
Okay, uh, that's about it. I hope you enjoy it, and I hope uh, you read some amazing comic books. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.